Hi everybody, it's Soul Tash Math Tutor and today we are going to be causing pain and consternation to the problem of proportion and inverse proportion. I'm going to show you that it's really easy and in fact, and this is the crazy thing, you know it already. So, with a little bit of faith in ourselves, we're going to crack on. But before I go on, just a reminder, if you like it, click the like button. If you want comments, put a comment in here. I will come back to you. I'm happy to make videos to support you. And down here, you can add it to your playlists if you want to. Well, who's heard of the word proportion before? Or inverse proportion? Inverse proportion? That's just like proportion, but doubly as bad. Well, look, I'm going to show you now that you actually know what proportion is. I'm going to provide you with a practical example, and you go, I understand how that works. Here we go. Well, look, the first, let's take an example. Let's uh, look at Granny. And I've written Granny there just in case you can't work out who Granny is. But look, hey, Granny has got um, some grandchildren. And it's coming up to Christmas, and Granny's. By the way, that this this one here. This one here. Is just an orangutan, but that's me. That's funny. There's always a place for humour in maths, kids. Okay. Anyway, um, so look, Granny's. Co it's coming up to Christmas time, and she wants to give some money to these children, and she loves them very very much, and so. She wants to give them some money, and at the end of the day, she's going to give them, um, let's say, I don't know, she's going to give them £10 each. So how much money will Granny end up forking out for the children for their Christmas? Well, we can work it out, can't we? We know that because there's three children, £10 each, then that's going to be... Thirty pounds, and do you know what you've just done? You've just done a proportion question. Now let's have a look at that mathematically. Well, the first thing that we could say is that Granny. I'm just going to call Granny G, the big G. Well, she equals, and here's the best bit. We know how much she equals. She equals thirty pounds, and we know that she had. Hang on, everybody. We know that she had £10. But we also know that she also had three grandchildren. And we've probably worked out that if Granny pays um, £10 for each child, then that's going to equate to 3 times 10, which is 30. So, you may not know that, but or this, but that... That, all that is, is proportion. And if we just move that up there for a second, and what we're going to be saying, and this is the sort of thing that you'll have in uh, your exam, that you will have some sort of unknown, which is going to be, I don't know, maybe the G number, or it's going to be this bit of the fraction here, or it's going to be the end result here, and you've just got to work it out. And normally, and this is the bit that, people get all het up about part of proportion is there'll be usually a k in there and it'll be find k and in fact if we were to use this example the question might be you've got 30 and it equals k times 10 so what is k well if we just take it back to the three grandchildren and granny then we know that k equals Three, and that would be an example of of a proportion question. And so, before we leap into an example, let me also just point out that just to make life a little bit more exciting, I could say complicated, but not for us maths Jedi to get too stressed about the sign for directly proportional. Oh yes, there is one. Well, the directly proportional sign is, and I'm going to draw it really carefully. It looks like that. It's sort of a, I don't know, a sideways 8. But I'd have to be really careful because that looks like infinity with that bit chopped off. 
but it basically looks like that. Okay, so here we go. Here is one of those super duper questions, which is here. Y is directly proportional to X. Brain goes to scrambled egg, don't worry. Think about Granny and her three children. And when X equals 3, then Y equals 15. And we are not stressed because we know um, that Y is directly proportional to X. Okay, so we're thinking about Granny and that K thing. Remember the K? And uh, X is 3 and Y is 15. What is the constant of proportionality? Okay, constant of proportionality, just more words, but it's really, remember with Granny worked out that she times to the 10 by 3, and the 3 might be K, well the K is the constant of proportionality. So, what we can say then is that Y equals K times X. Now, hey, this is looking pretty familiar because that's sort of the granny and there's the grandkids and this was the three and that was the ten and we ended up with thirty. Remember all of that? It's sort of there, isn't it? There's not much more to it. Uh, so, But we know some numbers. We know that y is 15. So 15 equals and I don't know k yet. I've got to find that out. That is the constant of proportionality okay fine and um, of course we know we know with 3 we know that x equals 3 so it's k times 3 okay well look we need to do some shuffling around here rearranging the formula but that means that well k must equal 15 divided by 3 and I haven't got enough room here so I'm going to shift that over there so that means that k equals 5. And that's just like, how. what we're saying here is, how much have I got to multiply x by to equal y? How much have I got to multiply 3 by to get 15? Well, there you go. It's 5. That is directional proportionality, and that is the constant of proportionality which is equal to k. And basically, fundamentally, everything's... Uh, that is what the proportionality is. Now, we talked about y is proportional to x, and basically what we're saying is that as y goes up, then x goes up. And that's a bit like saying if Granny paid £10... And remember, we multiply by the constant of proportionality. Or, in other words, we times it by k, which in our case was 3. Then what did the kids get? Well, they got x, which equaled 30. So what that means then is, if we took that a step further, if we said, well, what if Granny paid £20 for each child? It would still be multiplied by 3 but the kids would get 60. So you can see that as the y value goes up, so the x value goes up, and that is y being proportional to x. Basically, as one goes up, the other goes up. So what do you reckon to uh, inverse proportionality then? Well, let's think about it in these terms. If y was proportional to x, then as y went up, then x went up. So what do we think inverse would be? Well, inverse is one of those strange mathematical terms that probably only mathematicians really use. Inverse, inverse, invert. If I, maybe, if I was a language fantastic person, I might be able to see a, a link between inverse and invert. But invert means turn something upside down, doesn't it? And that's, that is what inverse proportionality means what that means is that as y goes up x actually goes down and I guess I'm trying to think of a, a way of looking at that and it might be that if I'm I don't know in a balloon this is me in a balloon that's a really rubbishy balloon but the higher up I go if I was miles and miles above the earth in other words my distance my distance 
y had increased, then the size of the man, well he'd now look about that big, that's me drawing a little man, as I was way up in the clouds and the sky. So he gets smaller, his, he gets smaller, smaller, that's him getting smaller, only because he appears to be smaller as I get higher. Mm, I suppose that's a way of thinking of inverse proportionality, but fundamentally it comes back to that as y increases, x decreases. And again to link into some ideas here, in that previous example I had of uh, proportion y equaled kx. Well, in inverse proportion, y equals, and here comes the thing that I guess you're going to just have to learn for the moment, it's k over x. In other words, the x bit here was x, here it's 1 over x. In other words, we flip over the x value, we flip it, if you've looked at the fractions, things I've done before, we take x, because, in fact, I'm not going to go there. I, I will. Look, some of you may follow this, because x actually can be written as x over 1, because anything divided by 1 is, in fact, itself. Well, if I flip it, it becomes 1 over x, and that's the inverse bit. So here we go, and this is a, an exam question, and uh, first thing I want you to notice is it's very wordy and it's a case of really pulling out the, the bits of it. So here we go. L is, well, inversely proportional. Okay, that's one of the bits we need to know. Uh, to the square root of M. And we're also given some figures here as well. So what's the first thing we do? Okay, well, here we go. Well, what we can say then is that L, well, hey, if it was directly proportional, I'll do that strange sign thing. L is directly proportional to, what was it? Well, it's the square root of m, isn't it? To the square root of m. Now, we've got to do the inversely proportional thing, which means that L is inversely proportional. And what did inverse mean? Well, it meant we just put 1 over whatever we're talking about. And what we're talking about is this baby here. So we put it 1 over the square root of m. But if we go back to the granny question, we know that there's always going to be floating in there a k, isn't there? So what we do is we write it as l equals k. Remember that was the times 3 when she had 10 pounds and 3 grandchildren times 1 over the square root of m. Now for the Jedi amongst you, you can actually write it k over square root of m. It's uh, exactly the same thing. I can explain that to people if you like. Um, but the best thing to do is have a look at one of the uh, fractions um, videos. That will show you how to do it. Now I'm just going to punch some numbers in. So L is 35 equals k over the square root of 100, well I know what that equals, that's 35 equals k over, square root of 100 is 10, and then I'm going to rearrange that equation to make k the subject, so what do I do, multiply this side by 10, which means I'm also going to multiply that side by 10, and what I get is k equals 350. OK, let's bring some of those uh, bits together, uh, just to round off. And that would be that if y is directly proportional to x, then y equals kx. And if we go back to the granny thing, this is granny. This is how much she multiplies by, in our example it was 3, the money that she had, which was £10. And the other thing that we've got 
is we've got y is inversely proportional to x, which would be 1 over x, which would be written as y equals k, because same ideas, there's granny, uh, there's the amount she's going to times, but um, let's just write 1 over x in here. The other concept we've got here is that as for a directional proportional, proportionality is y goes up, x goes up, and for improv, inver, okay, my teeth are falling out, as inverse proportional, as y goes up, x goes down. Okay, that's been uh, 15 minutes and 43 seconds of proportionality font. It's basically just an algebraic um, problem and hooking out the numbers from the words. I will try to do some more examples for you. This has been Saltash Math Tutor. I hope that's been of help. If it's not, then please make comments and I will respond.